In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to fix contrast exposure and white balance problems using the levels command in Adobe Photoshop. This photograph was taken in Spain, it's a Vida Cathedral, and it was taken on a dull day with a point and shoot camera set to automatic. It's a common situation and it's a very common result. The image is flat, dull and has a bluish tinge to it, so not very appealing. But we're going to fix that using the levels option. But before I do, let's have a look at the histogram. The histograms up here in the navigation palette, and we can just drag this out and make it a bit bigger. There we go. Right, the histogram is a graph, and it's giving you a readout of all the brightness values in this image. The graph starts at zero, representing black, and goes on to 255, which is white. And what this graph is actually telling us is there are no black values in this image. Okay, we've got some very dark values here with the doors, but they're not actually black, they're very, very dark brown. And we've got absolutely no light or white values in this image either. This sky is very dark. Normally the sky would fade to almost white. And a, a well-balanced image would have a histogram that would start at the zero end and rise up and down through the middle and then fall away to the white end. So clearly this image is very unbalanced. This lump here represents the values in the sky and this lump here represents the values in the building. So we're going to fix that one. Now you could go to the automatic quick fix option by going on image adjustments and auto levels. And we'll just have a go and see what happens with that. Okay, well it certainly made it more contrasty and it's fixed the problem with the histogram. It's starting at the black end and virtually ending at the white end. But the building still looks very dark and heavy because it hasn't actually changed anything in the middle values. It hasn't altered any of this. So although it's an improvement, it's not brilliant. So we'll, but we'll just take a copy of that one for later to come back to. And let's start back where we were. Right, the way I like to do it is to use the levels command in the layers palette here. And we'll click on that and we'll do it manually. Here again we've got the histogram showing, here you go, 255 which is the white. And you've got a little white slider here which you can move. And zero which is the black end and there's a little black slider you can move. And we've also got a slider we can move to control the center point called the gamma. And this changes the middle values. Right, well, first of all I'm going to drag the white slider right into the beginning of this graph here which lightens up the sky and then I'm going to drag the black slider right into the beginning of the black just brings the contrast back and now by moving the center slider I can lighten up those shades in the building to lighten up the building. Okay just bring that black one up a bit, give it a bit more contrast. But that hasn't actually fixed our colour cast problem. For the colour cast we have these three eyedroppers here. The black eyedropper, if I click on anything in the image with using the black eyedropper, it will turn those values to black. The white eyedropper, if I click anything on anything in the image with the white eyedropper, it will turn those values to white and anything lighter in the image will also be white. The grey eyedropper in the middle is the one that we're interested in because this will set anything underneath it to a neutral grey and will adjust the colour cast in the image. So if we'll click on that and you'll see my cursor's now changed to that little eyedropper. And I look in the image for something that should be a neutral grey. Now it's not always easy to find, um, particularly with an image like this, but these lamp posts here are normally black and where the light's hitting it I would expect that to look a fairly neutral grey. So if I just click on those that area there, and you see that's changed the image. It's warmed the image up. It's taken the blue away, possibly a little bit too much. I'll just reposition it slightly. Mm, it's gone a bit pink. OK. And you'll notice that because this is a uh, area is not a flat colour, just moving the eyedropper around a bit can change the value. So it's a bit subjective, 
you might have to find something you like best and when you're happy with it go go with it but if you wish to fine tune it you've got these other channels here which show you the red the green and the blue and you can change this slightly just to tone your results down a bit if you wish and I think that's probably pretty good like it is so I click OK but now look what's happened to our histogram we've got loads of gaps in it and what it's done is it's dragged all the values it had out to fill the spaces at either end but it's not really got anything to fill it fill the gaps in in the middle you can't make information you can only take the information you've got and just spread it out a bit which is what it's happened what has happened here and why we've got all these gaps however it's not a huge problem on an image like this um, if it was any worse if the gaps were any bigger you would start to see the color breaking up a bit particularly um, in the sky which is the most noticeable bit however it's our sky block that's the least um, scattered here it's the building that's got the most problems with it according to the histogram but because the building is made up of blocky colors anyway because it's bricks and stone you don't tend to notice it but in another tutorial I'll show you how to do this same kind of edit in 16-bit mode which will largely get rid of this problem but for now dealing with a normal image in 8-bit mode which is what most of your JPEG images will be this is good enough so we'll just put that back in there collapse it down okay now we can just go layer flatten image and that image is ready to be saved one last thing before I go remember I took a snapshot of the auto fix I'll just take a snapshot of this one okay All right here's the version with the auto fix and here's the version with the manual fix and I think you'll agree in the auto fix this is still all very dark where in this one we've got much more detail in the building still retains a little bit of the colour in the sky with the auto fix you see the sky's lost all its colour altogether and with the manual fix we've got a bit of a blue tint which was what it was like on the day and the warmer tones of this sandstone coming through so there you are for more tips and tutorials on using photoshop why not visit my website at www.sally-jane.co.uk